Praise the Lord. Why don't you stand up for a moment. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because of this glorious day and a wonderful opportunity that you have given unto us. Lord, we pray that this first day of the year for us to come together and then for us to hear your word showing us the way ahead and the vision that we ought to have. Lord, we know this is going to be a glorious year. It's going to be a wonderful year. Lord, we accept the promises you have given us for this year. And Lord, we pray it will be well with everyone in Jesus' name. We're praying, Lord, it will be a year of joy. A year of miracles. A year of signs and wonders. A year of fulfillment. A year of accomplishment. A year of success for everyone in Jesus' name. Open our eyes as we study your word together. And we pray, Lord, that your mighty hand will be upon every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. You can sit down. Tonight we have a special Bible study. And for those of us who are back home and you are connected by satellite, our leaders, our overseers and coordinators and group coordinators and other sectional leaders are here. And we're starting our congress tonight. But before the congress really begins, I want to have the privilege of sharing with you back at home in all the places where you are. The privilege of sharing the word of God. Of knowing what the Lord has for us this year. Just last night, many people all over the world, many people all over this continent of Africa, many people all over our churches took resolutions. And the resolutions they took and they're expecting that this coming year, this is what will happen and this is what they will have. I'm asking you a question. Why do those resolutions not come through? Because you see, when resolution is hanging between heaven and earth, and it doesn't have an anchor, a foundation, a base, a cornerstone upon which you build that resolution, it doesn't really work. An isolated resolution. A dangling resolution. A kind of resolution that doesn't have an anchor. What makes the anchor for a resolution? Number one, renunciation. You see, if you did what you did before, you will always get what you always got. If there is no renunciation before the resolution, but you know, you look at the past... And as you look at the past, you say, this is what dragged me down. This is what destroyed my prospects of the past years. This is what created problems for me. Number one, renunciation. I renounce them. I'm going forward. I'm looking ahead. I want a new year. A new prospect. A new life. A new possession because of that number one. Before that resolution can take effect, you have to build it on the foundation of number one, renunciation. Number two, regeneration. And what a glorious scene when you come to the Lord and there is a change in the heart, a regeneration. You know many people, if the nature is not changed, whatever resolutions we make, there will be no power. To carry out that resolution. But it is when there is a regeneration. 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 That word regeneration there. You have the word inside there. Generate. And it is the power. It is the energy. It is the enthusiasm of the spirit. That something is injected into you. And then your inner man is strengthened. It is that regeneration that will give spring to your feet. 
that will give motion to your hands that will give thoughts positive thoughts to your mind it is that that will generate the power that will be able to pick up this resolution and move on number three is the word reconciliation uh, you know your enemies will always drag you back that is the people you count as enemies every thought of so and so doesn't want my progress will be making you look down and if you don't have reconciliation reconciliation with god reconciliation with man you'll be thinking every time of the enemy they want to drag me down they want to pull me down why don't you go to them and reconcile so that you'll not be bothering your mind all through the year with so and so doesn't want any positive thing for me reconciliation that if there is anything hanging in your mind it gives you worry and anxiety when you have some unresolved problems unresolved problems unfinished task incomplete relationship reconciliation is what brings everything complete have you noticed any uncompleted action it's going to drag you down. In fact, it makes you feel unsettled. Uh, let me show you show this example. For example, let's say you look, look up here. You find a person that has a cup of water and he wants to drink. He puts it in the mouth and he opens the mouth like this and he does not drink. You feel it somehow. That uncompleted task that he has led undone. He wanted to do it. You were watching him. And he didn't do it. Uncompleted action will drag you down. And the same thing. Every time you have a thought in your mind. So and so. I need to settle something with him. Such and such. I need to regularize some things with him. Go ahead and do it. You see why people, why they are dragged back and they are tied down. It's because there is no reconciliation. Go ahead and reconcile. And then the resolution will be built on a solid ground. Number four, redemption. Redemption from the curse of the law. How many people are intelligent but the curse that is on them will not allow them to fly with the eagles. How many people have a lot of vision, a lot of goals, a lot of things that they said, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And the car sanging on their head is like a great mountain. I will not allow them to move on. But when you are redeemed from the curse of the law, and there is no curse, and you are free to fly, I'm free to move, I'm free to envision the future and then there's nothing that is holding you back no enemy is holding you back no curse is holding you back then you can move on number one is renunciation number two is regeneration number three is reconciliation number four is redemption and then number five is reformation reformation what if a person is always lazy and there's no reformation what if a person is always procrastinating and there is no and there is there's no reformation? What if a person is always forgetful? Didn't you say you will do this, my brother? I forgot. And there is no reformation. He does not think, why am I always pushing the work of today till tomorrow? And tomorrow never comes. When will I change? When will I turn around? What will happen in my life so that I'll be able to carry out the resolution of last night? The resolution of the old year coming on to the new year. There must be reformation. Because you know, the outside world is the reflection of the inward world. What that means is... Whatever you see on the outside is a product of what is inside. If you are gloomy inside, if you are sorrowful inside, if you are sad inside, if you are negative inside, what 
you see outside will be gloomy, will be sad, will be sorrowful, will be negative. Because negativity inside attracts negativity outside. Sorrow inside also attracts sorrow outside. A negative attitude inside will attract a negative attitude outside. Have you ever found this law of attraction in your life? You are thinking of somebody and then you have a phone call from him. Attraction, law of attraction. You are thinking of doing something and then the person you wanted to do the thing to just appears. I was just thinking about you. How come you came? Because of the law of attraction, the what is inside attracts what is outside. And therefore, if there is something negative on the inside and there is no reformation and there is no change, no transformation, the new year will be like the old year. And the resolutions you took last night will mean nothing. But let there be reformation. A changed man, a changed attitude, a changed outlook, and a changed kind of vision, a changed kind of fellowship interaction. And then this new year, you'll be able to carry out your resolution. Number six is resurrection. Resurrection. Let the old die and let the new come alive. It is like you want to make the difference between this new year and the old year. The difference between death and life. The past is gone. Get it buried. All the ideas of the past, all the problems of the past, they are gone. Get them buried and then let there be a resurrection so that you will live in this new year with the power of the resurrection of Christ. And except there is that resurrection, if we're still tied to the old dead year, the stench, the odor of the bad things that died last year will be dragging it along with us in the new year and people will come near and say looks like i'm spending the odor of last year on you looks like i'm smelling the odor of the things that happened last year still on you let there be a resurrection number seven is revelation Actually, you cannot make a good resolution if you don't have a revelation from the Lord. It is the revelation of the one that knows the future from the beginning. The one that knows tomorrow from today. And the one that says, I know what's going to happen in January and February till December. And then when you are linked up with the God of revelation, then the resolution will be meaningful. And so, if this year is going to be a new year, and we're going to have the fulfillment of the resolutions we took when the last year, the old year was passing away and the new year was coming on. There must be one re renunciation, two regeneration, three reconciliation, four redemption, and then five reformation, six resurrection, and then seven revelation. Look at the revelation we have right now in Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 1, from verse 13. Here the light of the earth. What a revelation this is. If you can make your resolution on this fact, I am the salt of the earth. What resolution, what decision will I take on the basis of that revelation? Here the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savour, where we shall it be salted? It is not for good for nothing, but to be cast out and trodden under the foot of men. What resolution can I take if the salt has lost its sweetness? If the law, if the salt has lost its saltiness, what resolution can you make really if the believer has lost the faith? And the grace and the things that actually produces the sweetness in our lives. That's why it says, remember, you are the salt of the earth. Walk on that revelation. 
Work on that revelation. Take your resolution, your decision, what you want to do this year, what you want to be this year, on the basis of this revelation that ye are the salt of the earth. In verse 14, ye are the light of the world. What a revelation this is. That now we are the light of the world and we we resemble Christ. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. But on a candlestick and it giveth light to all that are in the house. What revelation to give light to all that are in the house. To give light to all that are in the house. In which house? Number one, in your own house. The revelation the Lord is giving us is that here you are in this new year. And you are to give light to all in the house. In which house? In the extended house. Where you have tenants and co-tenants. Where the landlord is and the other people are in the house. In which house? In this house where we are now. This is the house of God. What revelation the Lord is giving us that he are the light of the world. And he wants you to put your light on a bushel. Not under, on a candlestick rather. So that you'll be able to show light and shine light to all in this house. What house? In the house fellowship where you are. What a house that is. Your punctuality in that house fellowship. Your contribution in that house fellowship. And your joy, the light on your face in that house fellowship. The encouragement in that house fellowship that you'll put the light, the candle, on the candlestick that you may show light unto all in the house. What house? Israel as a nation is referred to as a house, the house of Israel, the house of Jacob. This is a nation, and this nation is like a house. And that anywhere you are, that this nation, this house, may be able to see the light. That you will put this light on a candlestick and then it will show light to all that are in the house. Do you show light to your friends? Do you show light to your enemies? Do you show light to the people that do not have light? That should be your resolution this year. That you want to shed abroad so much light. That the people will see light through your own light. And therefore Jesus said let your light so shine. What other resolution do you need? I am going to let my light so shine in this new year. That's a great resolution. Anywhere I go I want to shine forth. Like a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people that we may show forth the light of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous glorious light. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. That they may see your good works. I don't want anybody this year to say after coming around with me that he couldn't see grace. He couldn't see love. He couldn't see mercy and compassion. He couldn't see knowledge. He couldn't see wisdom. He couldn't see energy, devotion, consecration, surrender. I want the people around me to see. That's the resolution we're taking. Let your light so shine before men. That they may see your good works. And then they will glorify your father who is in Heaven, it will happen. This is the result of saving power that has worked in us to be the salt of the earth and to be the light of the world. Christ knew what grace he had given to his own people. And he knew those who had been converted to him, converted through him, converted in him. He knew the great spiritual experience, the life-transforming experience they already had. 
And as the original creation was good. God saw everything that he made. Have you noticed what God did? Every, at the end of every day, let there be light. And then he looked at the light and he saw it was good. And let there be water in the firmament of heaven and also in the firmament of the earth. And he said, and he saw it was good. And he divided the water in the firmament above and then in the one below. And he saw it was good. Let all the waters gather together into one place and he called the seas. And he saw it was good. And he went on and on and on like that. And then at the end it says, and God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. And the Lord is telling us the same thing. As the original creation was good, very good. He wants this new creation. A child of God. A believer. He wants him to be good, very good. And what a great revelation for the new year. Salt and light in the new year. You will be salt. And you will be light. To be a new creature, number one. Number two, to have new life. Number three, to have a new heart. Number four, to have a new spirit. Number five, to have a new nature. And then to be a new lump. And number seven, to operate by new commandments. A new commandment I give unto you. That ye love one another. As I have loved you, by this shall all men know. That ye are my disciples. If you have love one towards another. To walk and to live and to operate. By that new commandment and then new tongues and then the new cruise of, of salt that the Lord wants in our lives so that we can put that into the lives of other people around and sweeten their lives. Our inward state will determine our outward acts. Who we are on the inside will determine what we do on the outside. And what we do on the outside will determine our happiness, usefulness and destiny. What we bring into this new year is what this new year will bring back to us. Please remember that we cannot just take resolutions and fold our hands. If we bring nothing into the new year, the new year will bring nothing back. If we bring the old stuff into the new year, the new year will bring the old stuff back to us. It is as we bring the light into the new year and we bring the salt into the new year. Then the new year too will bring the light and the salt back to us. A salty life in this new year will produce a sweet experience. And light in this new year will produce a brightened ex existence. Your existence and your experience will be sweet and brightened this new year in Jesus' name. Amen. New year, amen. amen. Uh, you know, we always forget ourselves. We always talk the old language, the old amen, the old hallelujah. And then we forget today is 1st of January 2007. Give me a good amen. amen. We divide the study tonight to three parts. Number one, imperatives for salty saints in the new year. Imperatives for salty saints in the new year. Number two, influence of shining saints in the new year. The influence of shining saints in the new year. And then we're going to have number three, instruction for sanctified saints in the new year. Instruction for sanctified saints in the new year. Let's come to number one, the imperatives for salty saints in the new year. Number one now, we're looking at Matthew chapter five, verse 13. Matthew chapter five, Verse 13, ye are the salt of the earth. Ye are the salt of the earth. The Lord is telling us what we are. And we should agree with the Lord and make the same confession that the Lord is making concerning us. What would this world be without salt? It is salt is a cleansing agent that purifies the water on earth. And salt is a necessary health-preserving agent for our body. Salt delays the process of corruption and death on earth. 
and salt is useful to man and demanded by God. As for the usefulness of salt to man, that you know already. We knew that since we came to this world, salt is very useful to everyone, but it's also demanded by God. Look at Leviticus chapter 2 verse 13. Leviticus chapter 2. We're reading from verse 13. And every oblation of thy meat offering shall thou season with salt. That's the demand of God. Every oblation of thy meat offering thou shalt season with salt. Neither shalt thou suffer per meat allow the salt of the covenant of thy God to be lacking from thy meat offering. With all thy offerings thou shalt offer salt. Three times in one verse. The Lord repeatedly said, I need the salt in your offering. I need the salt in your meat offering. It will be the mark of the covenant between you and I. Well then, it's telling us that as we come to offer our own offering before the Lord, it's not just the bare offering. It's not just the giving of the gift. It's not just the giving of the offering. It's not just the giving of the time. It's not just the offering unto the Lord. Just anything. He wants us to offer that. Anything we're going to offer. He wants us to offer it with salt. Saltiness. The sweetness. The grace. The love. The yieldedness and the appreciation of the almighty God. He says, every offering you bring to him must be offered with salt. That means then, whatever it is you are offering. Your talent. Your time. Your gift. Your ability. Your tithes. Your money. Whatever it is you offer with salt the salt of grace it says if the salt is missing the offering is redundant it's rejected it's unacceptable before the lord look at that verse 13 again every oblation of a meat offering thou shalt offer season with salt neither shalt thou suffer the salt of the covenant of thy god to be lacking from the meat offering with all thine offering. Notice the word all. There is no exception here. Maybe I can offer this one without salt. Nothing like that. Everything, all thy offering it says, thou shalt offer with salt. It tells us in Ezekiel chapter 43. Ezekiel chapter 43. I'm reading from verse 24. Ezekiel chapter 43. We're looking at verse 24. Again, it's emphasizing here the very importance and the indispensability, the necessity of the salt in our offering. Ezekiel 43 verse 24. Here it says, And thou shalt offer them before the Lord. And the priest shall cast salt upon them. That is, the offering we offer to the Lord. It says, this is the demand of the Lord. And this is the requirement of the Lord. This is what God says, if this is not there, you have not offered anything. The offering might appear to be very costly. To be very expensive. But it says if the salt is not there. Then it is not acceptable in the sight of the Lord. There must be salt in the offering. And then it says as you go on in that verse 24. It says and they shall offer them up for a burnt offering unto the Lord. Would you remember this year then? That has to come before the Lord. Every time you come to the presence of the Lord. You are offering salt something to the Lord, whatever it is, 
The salt must be there. The sweetness must be there. The cheerfulness must be there. The joy must be there. The enthusiasm must be there. Your heart must be there. So that it will not just be a dry, useless, tasteless, tasteless, unacceptable offering in the sight of the Lord. Let's come back to Numbers chapter 18. Numbers chapter 18. I'm reading to you from verse 19. Numbers 18 verse 19. All the heave offerings of the holy things which the children of Israel offer unto the Lord. I have given thee and thy sons and thy daughters with thee by a statues forever. It is a covenant of salt forever before the Lord. It is a covenant of salt forever before the Lord. And then it says unto thee and to thy seed with thee. And you see what the Lord is requesting for them, what the Lord is requiring from you and from me, from every one of us this year, that anything you are going to offer to the Lord, it must be with the salt. Have you ever thought about that? And many people just thought, I'm just going to bring my offering to the Lord. And we say, where is the salt? They say, I don't know about that. All I have is an offering before the Lord. It's not acceptable. Ye are the salt of the earth, a good influence, a godly influence, a gracious influence, a loving influence, a compassionate kind of life that backs up your offering before the Lord. That salt must be there. If the salt is not there, it's not acceptable in the sight of the Lord. The Lord is reminding us that ye are the salt of the earth. And everything you offer before the Lord, everything you give before the Lord, everything you surrender unto the use of the Lord must have the salt, the saltiness, the sweetness, the savor of salt in it before it can be acceptable, accepted in the sight of the Lord. And we're reading in Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles. I'm reading to you there from chapter 13. Second Chronicles, chapter 13. And I'm reading there from verse 5. Second Chronicles, chapter 13, verse 5. Ought she not to know that the Lord God of Israel gave the kingdom over to Israel, to David forever, even to him and to his sons, by a covenant of salt. By a covenant of salt. You know, we always have this covenant month between us and the Lord, between the Lord and us. Every January, and then on Sundays, we come together to worship the Lord. And we offer unto the Lord ourselves, our time, and everything. And we use that month, and we use that Sunday, every Sunday of the year, in preparation to prepare for the year that is still ahead, for the months ahead. And then it says, it must be a covenant of salt. What if we have a covenant of God, a covenant of bitterness, a covenant of negative attitude, a, co a covenant of onion and pepper, a covenant of bad interaction, bad attitude. That's not going to be a good covenant, but a covenant of salt. That the sweetness is there as you come before the Lord. And the joy is there as you come before the Lord. And the savor, the grace, the mercy, the, the light on your face beaming out of your face is there as you come before the Lord. A covenant of salt. I pray God will do it. In 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2. What are you reading from verse 19? Second Kings chapter 2 verse 19. And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of the city is pleasant, as my Lord seeth. But the water is not, and the ground barren. And Elisha just received the double portion of the Spirit of God that was on Elijah. 
And then the, uh, you, you know the story. As he was coming back, he came to Jericho. And the men of Jericho now met him and they said, look at our situation. That people will be able to come to you in this new year. Because they believe that you'll be able to turn the bitterness of their lives into sweetness. You'll be able to turn the barrenness of their lives into fruitfulness. They'll be able to expect something from you and they'll be able to say, see where we have been. This is a new year. See our condition. And then you'll not be a person that will say, how can I help you? I have my own problems too. I have my own sorrows too. I have my own heartaches too. I have my own burdens too. No. Elisha responded to the people. When the people came to him and they said, see the situation of this city. Looks pleasant on the outside. Outwardly. As my Lord sees. But the water is not, and the ground is barren. And he said, bring me a new cruise and put salt therein. You want to make life sweet for other people? Bring a new cruise and salt therein. You want joy, happiness, excitement to be around in the lives of the people around you? Bring them some cruise and salt Therein, how important salt is for you, for me, for all the people we interact with in this new year. In verse 21, and he went forth unto the spring of the waters and cast the salt in there and said, Thus says the Lord, I have healed these waters, there shall not be from this any more death and barren land that your presence in the lives of other people your interaction in the lives of other people will turn negative things away from their lives yeah. will cancel totally and banish totally every curse every yoke away from their lives in jesus name yeah. that your interaction with them your association with them and you're coming to them into penetration of the salt and the sweet life that you have will mean something great and something good in their lives it will happen in jesus name in verse 22 so the waters were healed unto this day according to the saying of elisha which is spake. and then in job chapter 6 Job chapter 6. We're reading from verse 6. Job chapter 6, verse 6. Can that which is unsavory be eaten without salt? Or is there any taste in the white of an egg? It's talking about the lives of other people around you. Those who do not have the salt of grace in their lives. And the salt of the oppression of the power of God in their lives. And it says, do you think their life will ever be tasteful? Be worthy of a, a good life. If they do not have the salt, well, then you have the salt available in your life. Get near them. Interact with them. Associate with them. Impart something into their lives so that... The kind of a tasteless life they have will have some taste and sweetness as you come to them interacting with them. As we've been mentioning salt, we've been using figure of speech. We've been using that word salt as a metaphor. We've been using that word salt as a symbol. Let's now go to real language, open language, clear language for you to understand what that salt is all about. In Colossians chapter 4, Colossians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 6. Colossians chapter 4, reading from verse 6. Here the language is very clear and very plain. No more just metaphor, just figure of speech, or just a type of symbol. It tells us in Colossians chapter 4 verse 6, And let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt. That's the salt, the grace. Let your life be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that she may know how ye ought to answer 
every man. In Mark chapter, five, chapter 9 verse 50. Mark chapter 9. I'm reading to you from verse 50. Mark 9 50. Salt is good. But if the salt have lost its saltness, wherewith will ye season it? Have salt in yourselves. Have salt in yourselves. And carry that salt everywhere you go as you interact with people. Have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. We come back to Matthew chapter 5. In Matthew chapter 5, we're reading from verse 14 now. The Lord has been talking to us about salt. That ye are the salt of the earth. But you know that salt, if salt keeps to itself, it will be useless. Isolation will lead to uselessness. But association will lead to usefulness. It is as the salt associates with other ingredients that the usefulness of that salt will be known, will be felt, will be experienced. Isolation leads to uselessness. Think about that this new year. Isolation. I'll be by myself. I'll stay with myself. It's too risky to associate with other people. It's too risky to allow other people to get near me. Your isolation will lead to uselessness, but it is association, scriptural association, purposeful interaction that will add value to your life and bring usefulness to you and to all the people like the salt on the earth. Now, the influence of shining saints in the new year. The influence of shining saints in the new year. I'm reading from verse 14. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but under a candlestick. But on a candlestick, rather. On a candlestick. That's... And it giveth light to all that are, in, that are in the house. You light the candle. And for the light to be of any use to anybody, you put it on a candlestick. And then it will show light to everyone in the house. Great influence. Great influence. Influence is a word as well as a concept that everyone must be conscious of. Whether we know it or not, everyone has some influence on other people around them. The question is, what kind of influence do you have on the people around you? Some people have negative influence, misleading influence on others, while others have good, positive influence. Some have influence only on individuals. Other people have influence on nations, even on the whole world. Some influence a generation. Others influence many generations. And that's the word the Lord is wanting us to keep in mind this new year. The word influence. That I'll be a good influence on other people. A positive influence on other people. An encouraging influence on other people. An uplifting influence on other people. A challenging influence on other people. That's the goal. That's the resolution. That's the dream. That's the desire. That's the decision. The Lord wants everyone to have in this new year. <clears throat> you are the light of the world. And what a great influence light has. Have you noticed? We do more. During the day, when there is light, when there is the light of the sun, that we can ever do in the night. In the light, we are purposefully active. We are positively active. In the night, everything comes to a stand still. When there is no light, everything comes to a stand still. 
But when you are, you are the light of the home, the light of your place of work, the light in your community, the light to your friends, the light and enlightenment to the young, the light and enlightenment to the ignorant. What a great influence you will have. In the light of the shining saints, the world around us will be influenced and motivated to move in a good direction, a profitable direction. We give meaning to our lives and we add value to all the people's lives as we shine the gospel light to Christians and non-Christians around us. A year of darkness is a year of sorrow and gloom. A year of light is a glorious new year. And I pray that this year will be a year of light. Yeah. Just remove the cover that you're using to cover your, your light. And let the light shine bright so that we'll be able to have light through. Your experience through your life and through your Christian association interaction with us. Let's look at um, Job chapter 11. Job chapter 11, this shining light. Shining light. Job chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 13. In Job 11, 13. If thou prepare thine heart, and stretch out thine hands toward him. If iniquity be in thine hand, put it far away. And let not wickedness dwell in thy tabernacle. Do you see that that's renunciation? Renunciation before resolution. You have to get rid of the works of darkness. Then you'll be able to make a real resolution for this new year. It says in verse 15, For then thou shalt lift up thine face without sport. Yea, thou shalt be steadfast and shalt not fear. Because thou shalt forget thy mystery. And remember it as waters that pass away. Then it shall be clearer than the noonday and thou shalt shine forth thou shalt be as the morning let there be renunciation and then there's revelation now after that renunciation that your light will beam forth and shine forth but you know if you are dark on the inside the outside too will be dark if you're gloomy on your face, the outside world will give you back that same gloominess. And if there is negativity on the inside, a negative attitude, a negative character, and you have not renounced the past life, if there is no renunciation of the sin of the past, it will show on your face. That face will look dark. You know, you can read joy on somebody's face. That's the light. You can read happiness, contentment, satisfaction on somebody's face. That is the light. You can read worry, anxiety, trauma, trouble. Even an evil plan, wickedness, you can read it on somebody's face. And that is darkness. But if you want the new year to be a year, a year of happiness, a year of joy, a year of exuberance, a year that will bring fruitfulness to you, then that same exuberance and fruitfulness must be on the inside. And it is that that is reflected out. There must be renunciation before the revelation. And then after that, the resolution of this year being a bright year. It will be a bright year. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And I'm reading to you from verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Reading from verse 6. For God, who has who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts. That's the secret. That's the secret. God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts. 
Then it says to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That's how we're going to be able to have the light shining in this new year. In Philippians chapter, chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Reading from verse 14. Philippians chapter 2. Reading from verse 14. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. You know what? Once there's murmuring, the light goes off. When there's complaint, the light goes off. The murmuring and the complaint puts off your light. You know, somebody going around, I don't know why things are like this. I don't know why things are like that. I don't know why everybody is doing the way they're doing. Once there's murmuring and complaint, your light goes off. That means then the resolution you are taking this year, if the light is going to be on, it means that this year, no complaint. And you start at home. Charity begins at home. No complaint at home. No complaint to, against your wife, against your husband, against it. Why are the children always like this? Always running around. No complaint. No murmuring. And then you come to church why is this always like that? No complete, no murmuring. If we bring, if we drag the complaint of last year into the new year, the new year will be like last year. If we bring the murmuring, the complaint, the fighting, and the opposition, of last year into the new year. The new year will just be like a repetition of the old year. But then if you're bright enough, no worry, no anxiety. Just a bright, shining light. No complaint against anybody. Just understanding all things work together for good. For them that love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. If you live a life without complaint, without murmuring, your light will shine. Yeah. Nobody likes to be around somebody who's always grumbling, always murmuring, always complaining. As he's coming this way, you look at his face and then the shape of his mouth. That's my old friend again. He wants to start the whole story of murmuring and complaint. Then you, I don't want any sadness this force of January. I'll see you tomorrow. And then you go the other way. Nobody wants to meet a murmuring, complaining man or woman on the force of January. Because the force of January may dictate, may determine the rest of the year. Stop it. The murmuring. Stop it. The complaining. Let this year be a bright year. A cheerful year. A good year. Just appreciate people. Love people. Love people. Don't call people bad names. Even behind them. Even when they are not there. Don't call them bad names. Always grumbling. Murmuring. They've started again. They've done, this, they've done that again. When are you going to change yourself? Renunciation. And then revelation. And then resolution. In verse 15. Philippians chapter 2 verse 15. That she may be blameless and harmless. The sons of God without rebuke. In the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. Among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Holding forth the word of life. That I may rejoice in the day of Christ. You will rejoice. Yeah. And then it says that I have not run in vain. Neither, neither labored in vain. You will not labor in vain. Yeah. This year will be fruitful for you. Yeah. But remember, remember. No murmuring, no complaint. And then we're told in First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. 
We're reading from verse 9. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But here a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness. We're out of darkness. And then he has called us into his marvelous light. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. Proverbs chapter 4. And we're reading from verse 18. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18, here is what it says. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more. More and more. Our lights this year will be more and more. Yeah. You know, there are people that, you know, so I don't know why, why people say that. They want to do less and less. I may run too fast. I think this year I'm going to run less and less. That kind of resolution doesn't have a revelation in it. I've been too friendly with people. I'm going to be friendly with people less and less. That kind of resolution for the new year has no revelation in it. I've been giving too much to people. I'm going to give less and less. That kind of revelation for the new year doesn't have, and that kind of resolution doesn't have revelation in it. But you see, the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. What does that mean? It says, when you wake up in the morning, and then you look up, you can see the sun. As the time progresses, the sun is shining brighter and brighter. And then more and more until the noonday. And that's what the Lord is saying. That now as you wake up in this uh, first, of the, first day of the year. And then you have this moderate light. As you move on to the second day and to the third day and you progress in the new year that your light shall be shining more and more until the day of the coming of the Lord. It will be so in Jesus' name. In 2 Samuel chapter 23, what an important verse of scripture this is. It is very important. Look at it. In 2 Samuel chapter 23, we're looking at verses 3 and 4. 2 Samuel chapter 23, verses 3 and 4. The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me, He that ruleth among, over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. He that is the one that ruleth among men. And wonderful were leaders here. This is talking about you. This is talking about me. He that ruleth among men. Of course, men and women. Pastors, leaders, coordinators, group coordinators, youth leaders, children church leaders, campus church leaders, overseers, everyone. He that rules among men, it shall be just, ruling in the fear of God. And then in verse 4, he, that ruler, that coordinator, that leader, that overseer, that pastor, he shall be as the light of the morning. When the sun rises, even, even a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springing out of the earth by clear shining after rain. What's going to be the reward? If we keep on shining, and we have a positive, shining, glorious influence on other people around us. What's the result of that? What's the reward of that? Daniel chapter 12. In Daniel chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 3. Daniel chapter 12 verse 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. They that turn many to righteousness as the stars will shine forever and ever. Shine on earth that you may shine in 
eternity. We come to point number three. And this is instruction for sanctified saints in the new year. We come to Matthew chapter 5, reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. In Matthew 5, verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Here the Lord Jesus Christ said, let your light shine. No, that's not enough. Let your light so shine. He said, let your light shine before men. That's not enough. Let your light so shine before men. For what purpose? For what reason? That they may see. What are they supposed to see? Your idea, your doctrine, your sermon. What are they to see? Your good works. Something you do. Not just something you say. Something you do. Your life must have active service. Serving other people. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and then they will glorify your father who is in heaven. This is Christ's instruction, not a suggestion. Let your light so shine. This is not like an opinion. Let your light so shine. This is imperative. This is a commandment. This is what to do. You wake up in the morning, you say, Lord, today I'm going out. And I know I have just one assignment. And the assignment is, is to let my light shine. Let my light so shine. And then you come before somebody is trying to give you a bad day. Then you remember this fellow did not have any light to shine. He's living in darkness and today I must shine the light of the glorious gospel into his life. Somebody, you meet somebody during the day and then it's trying to rub on you a bad attitude with a frown, with a screaming, as if you had had a previous quarrel with him. You don't allow their darkness to influence you. You say, this is my chance to show this man that I have light to shine that he doesn't have. You're coming back home from the church and your husband is watching all frown, all screwed up. And then as the man is like that, you'll see him as he's waiting for you by the door, almost wanting to say, you think you are going to enter here? No smile at all. You say the man is having a hard time. I'm going to show that I'm coming from church. I have light to shine. I'm going to let my light so shine to this, my husband. And then you beam with a smile. Honey, how are you? And then your smile will melt his frown away. You're in the bus. And then the bus conductor wants to jump on you or see if you had a previous quarrel. And it's all screwed up. You think in your mind, poor man, maybe he had a bad time before he came out of the house this morning. He doesn't know Jesus. He doesn't have the light of Christ. I'm going to shine the light to this bus conductor. And then you smile. You say, my friend, how are you? I'm a Christian. Can I give you some light before I get down from the bus? Let your light so shine before men. Or maybe you just meet some people, they just, they are battered in life. And they do not know how they are going to run their lives. They are negative to the core. And you do not allow that negativism or negativity of the world to rub on you. Let your light so shine anywhere you go. Everywhere you go, let your light so shine before men. That they may see. It must keep on shining until they see. Until you turn their frown to a smile. Until you turn their negative attitude to a positive attitude. Let it shine. If it has not changed them, that means the shining is not enough. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and then they will glorify your father who is in heaven it will happen in Ephesians chapter 5 
Ephesians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 8. For ye were sometimes darkness, that's in the past, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful work of, works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Then it says, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore, he says, Awake, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. First John chapter 2. In First John chapter 2, we're reading from verse 9. First John chapter 2. Reading from verse 9. He that says is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. Hatred is darkness. Animosity is darkness. Enmity is darkness. Hostility is darkness. Let go. Release that. And then let your light so shine. The light of love. The light of companionship. The light of good positive interaction. Let your light so shine before men. That they may see your good works. The love. The mercy. The joy. The interaction. The friendship. The fellowship. The companionship. That they may see your good works. And then they'll glorify your father who is in heaven. It says, he that loveth his brother abideth in the light. Verse 10. And there is no occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness. And knoweth not whither he goeth. Because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Romans chapter 13 verse 12. In Romans chapter 13, we're looking at verse 12. Romans chapter 13, verse 12. The night is fast paint, and the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly. Honesty does light. Faithfulness, obedience to the word of God. That's light. Dishonesty. That's darkness. Disobedience to the word of God. That is darkness. It says let us walk honestly as in the day. Not in rioting and drunkenness. Not in chambering and wantonness. Not in strife and envying. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And make not provision for the flesh. To fulfill the lusts thereof. Philippians chapter 1 verse 27. Philippians chapter 1 verse 27. Only let your conversation, that means your lifestyle, your behavior, your manner of life. Only let your conversation, manner of life, behavior, conduct, character be as it becomes the gospel of Christ. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your fears that she stand fast in one spirit and in one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Chapter 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ, in Christ Jesus. 
who being in the form of God, thought it not troubling to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, but and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Christ is the light of the world. And we are also the light of the world. And here the Lord is saying, be like Christ. Let the mind of Christ be in you. Let the attitude of Christ show in your attitude. Let the spirit of Christ be manifested in your spirit. Let the lifestyle of Christ be your own lifestyle. Let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. It tells us in Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. Galatians 6, verses 9 and 10. And let us not be weary in well-doing. That's the good works we're talking about. Let us not be weary in well-doing. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And your husband is saying, have I seen any evidence that you're a Christian? Don't say, well, if you cannot see, that's all. I've done my best. That's all I can do. Do more until they see. Your children are saying, what's the evidence, daddy? What's the evidence, mommy, that you are a real Christian? What have you done for us children that other parents have not done? Have you not seen? All right, if you have not seen any good thing I've done, I'll not do any more. Don't do it like that. Do more until they see. That they may see your good works. You know, somebody says, I've been so gentle and the people say they cannot see any gentleness in me. All right, if, if you cannot see any gentleness, I'm packing it up. No more gentleness. Let me be myself. Do more until they see. That's what Jesus said. I've been doing all these good works and good works and good works. And the people said they cannot see anything. All right. If they cannot see, good luck to them. I cannot do more than this. Do more. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And then they'll glorify your father who is in heaven. That's what we are told in this Galatians chapter 9, 6 verse 9. And let us not be weary in well doing. Don't be tired. You will not be tired. New year for good works. New year for cheerful action. New year to sow a good seed in the lives of other people. New year not to allow tiredness or weariness or weakness, but to keep on doing more and more. This year is for more and more. I said it's for more and more. That amen looks like the old one I got before. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And then it says, for in due season ye shall reap. If we faint not, as we therefore have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who have the household of faith. We're told in Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. To the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, not just moderately, not just cantily, dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms. And then in spiritual, in hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace, does assault there again. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. And then in verse 23, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily. 
Do it joyfully. Do it cheerfully. Do it with your whole heart. Do it with all your strength. Do it actually as to the Lord and not unto men. In 1 John chapter 2 verse 28. 1 John chapter 2 verse 28. And now little children abide in him. In this new year abide in the Lord. That when he shall appear. We may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If we will do what the Lord has told us to do in this new year, and then you come to this new year of the salt of grace in your life, and then the light of the gospel in your life, this year will be totally diff different from all the past years. And this year will be fruitful for us. Will be joyful for us. Will be prosperous for us. Will be sowing something good and wonderful into everybody's life. And then life will sow something back into our lives. In Jesus name. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor. Wherewith shall it be salted? It is then for good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden on the foot of men. And ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light to all that are in the house. This new year then, every day of the new year, every moment of the new year, every opportunity you have in the new year, let your light so shine before men, not behind men, that they may see your good works when we turn the lights on. Even the blind will feel a sensation that the light is on. And when you turn the light on, even those who close their eyes will feel a sensation that light is on. Let your light so shine that even those who close their eyes will be able to have the sensation of the feeling, the feeling of sensation that the light is on. Your light will be on. And men will see your good works. And it will glorify your father who is in heaven. That this year will bring glory to God in your life. That everything you do, every way you go, everything you say, every action of your hand, people will see you and say, we thank God for him, we thank God for her. It will happen. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. That this year will be a year of the salt of grace. A year of bringing our sacrifice, bringing our offering, bringing our talent, bringing our gift, bringing our resources, bringing everything we have unto the Lord with the salt of grace. Ye are the salt of the earth. Ye are the salt of the earth. Don't let your salt lose its saltiness. Don't let your salt lose its sweetness. Ye are the salt of the earth. Ye are the salt, the sweetness, the savor of the earth. And let your salty influence decrease the corruption in the world. Let your salty influence slow down the process of decay in the world. Be the salt in your community. And don't isolate yourself. Don't hide yourself. 
hiding inside the room, inside the house, hiding inside the church. Isolation leads to uselessness. Association, interaction leads to usefulness. Let's taste the salt in your character. Let's taste the salt in your attitude. Let's taste the salt in your behavior. Not the bitterness, not the pepper, not the onion, the salt. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, where we shall it be salted? If you lose the sweetness, the gift will be useless. The talent will be useless. The offering will be useless. The sacrifice will be useless. The consecration will be useless. The position, great, great position of authority in the church. If there is no smile, no cheerfulness, no sweetness, no good word, only bitterness and anger, driving people around, pushing people around, being hard and tough on people, angry at people. Your position will mean nothing if the salt is missing. Cheer up and make the lives of other people better, brighter, sweeter. Complaining about everybody. Grumbling about everybody. People will just see you as bitter girl. Rather than a sweet salt. This is a new year. Make a resolution. No bitterness. No anger. Be considerate with people. Be sweet to people. Be encouraging to people. Appreciate people. No complaint. No murmur. Don't make the lives of other people miserable this year. Not make them feel bad regretting that they came near you make others happy be salt you are the salt of the earth let's see that sweetness there's no discrimination with salt Salt sweetens. Any ingredient it comes in touch ways, in contact ways. No discrimination. Smiling to some, frowning to others. Sweetness with everyone. There's a new year. Renunciation of the past. Regeneration. In reality, reconciliation with God and with everyone, redemption, total, complete redemption, reformation. Things have turned around, reformation, resurrection. And then, what a revelation we have today. 
on the basis of those seven pillars. Now you can make a resolution for the new year. On the basis of those seven pillars. Now you can make a resolution this year. My resolution this year, I'll make others happy. I'll make others cheerful. I'll make others have self-esteem. I'll make others feel that they are worth somebody. I'll not belittle people. I will not downgrade people. I will not discourage people. I will not beat down people. I will not destroy the joy of other people. I'll be salt. I'll be light. Resolution. Resolution. Be light. You are the light of the world. That's influence. That is influence. A good influence on other people around you. A positive influence on other people around you. The closest people around you. Let them see the light on your face, the joy, the cheerfulness on your face. Make this a bright year, bright in the lives of other people. And let the light shine even through your eyeballs. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. But on a candlestick that it may show and shine light to everyone in the house. Here is the instruction of the Lord then. Let your light so shine before men. You know the light is there. And it doesn't discriminate. Doesn't withdraw the bright rays. Because of so and so. Because of such and such. But the light shines for everyone. Let that light shine. So shine. Before men. Let's see the grace of God in your life as we are together. Let's say the joy of the Lord in your life as we are together. Let's say the beauty of Christian living in your life as we are together. If others are trying to give you a bad day, don't allow their darkness to put off your light. Let your own light so shine. That they will see. And then they will say. Why was I having a bad attitude? Why was I having a bad character? Why was I having a negative disposition? Let your light shine. Let your light so shine. Let your light shine before me. Let your light so shine before me. Until they see. Until they see. Your good works. Not evil works. Until they see. Your good works. And then. They'll glorify your God. Your father. Who is in heaven. <laughs>